Most of these birds are flying from Canada to Central America, Caribbean, South America, some hundreds of miles, some thousands of miles. And they make it all the way here just to crash into a window. Oh, we have a bird here. It hit a window, came to sit in a tree, and then died. Oh, poor thing. Everybody thinks the birds crashed it on high, but in the daytime collisions, it's all just the lower, the lower floors. So I knew that window collisions were a problem for migratory birds. I knew it was happening in New York City. I had no idea the scale of the problem. Uh, until I saw a, a picture on Twitter that was a layout of all the birds that had crashed into one building one morning. I kind of call it New York's dirty little secret. You know how moths are drawn to a light at night? The birds are the same. It's, nobody knows exactly why. the World Trade Center to do my route. It was about 6 a.m. And usually I'll see a few dead birds here and there, but I walked up and there were birds everywhere. Altogether that day, I documented 298 birds. So it was a lot of birds coming through, flying really low. And so that was one of these cases where it was all nocturnal collisions. It just actually flew into the building way up high. Uh, you know, they saw the light, got confused, we're flying low. So if the lights had been off, all, all of these lights had been off, I would imagine it wouldn't have been the same disaster. For spring migration, we patrol basically for April and May. And fall migration, it's more like 10 weeks. They've been doing this for thousands of years, flying along this Eastern flyway. They don't know how to avoid the city. It really is up to us to be better hosts to them. This area, this is like this little railing it doesn't look significant at all. You would never think it was a problem. And I found like five birds along this railing. Birds in all those trees in the 9-11 Memorial were flying over to these trees in Liberty Park. And there's also the whole front of this elevation is a green wall. So it says green, green, and then they just see green. breaks up the reflection and breaks up the illusion that it's clear. You know, it's funny, if you start looking around at gla glass lobbies, glass doors, everywhere they have these little like faint marks at eye level and at child eye level, like people don't notice, but it's so people don't want run into glass. It's not just birds. It's so funny because people are like, well, birds are so dumb. They can't even know, they don't even know it's glass, but it's like, you look at any lobby down here and you will see it at human eye level too. Like, and you don't notice it, but it keeps you from walking into glass. So we need to do the same for birds. Unfortunately, any city along any of the migratory flyways uh, have this problem. New York is, is one of the worst in the fall, but there's other cities that are worse. If you know of a building that seems to be killing a lot of birds to you know, 
try to, to talk to building management, work with a local conservation agency. Um, there's a lot you can kind of do on an advocacy level. And then on a personal level, if you have a house that has um, windows <laughs> where birds are crashing into, there's really, really easy home residential solutions um, that, that are really important because with up to a billion birds colliding with windows every year in the United States, um, a lot of that's happening at home.